we are now well on our way to completing the Power Hack G4 Quicksilver project. This is part number four. This is the part where we bring everything that we've been working on and slam it together in one package. After all, our end result needs to be a Power Hack or a Hackintosh inside this Power Mac G4 Quicksilver case all together, every single component working in harmony. So today, it is time to slap it all in and build this monster of a computer. Here is the inside of my Mac and I can't believe it's already time to start building. And of course, the first thing I'm gonna put in is the power supply. And uh, the power supply does actually collect fingerprints which is kind of shocking because it's not a glossy surface. It's just a really nice metal surface. So as soon as it's in and the system is built, I will be giving it a good clean. So I'm actually using the screws that came with my power supply um, because I don't have any other screws. I thought there were screws coming with the laser hive kit, but nope, you just use your own power supply screws, which is absolutely fine by me. Now the awesome thing is about the way this fits in is there is a good inch of clearance behind the power supply. You can get your fingers behind there, so that's a nice bit of extra airflow. So, four little screws in the bag that came with the power supply. So that is in guys. What I find interesting is there's only three holes for the power supply. Um, there isn't actually another one, but that's all good. It's going absolutely nowhere and it is certainly part of the case now. So there it is, sitting in there, just this big black box actually looks relatively awesome. So I'm very pleased with that. Now that the power supply is in out of the way, the reason I wanted to put that in first is because, you know, risk of dropping it on the motherboard and stuff, I guess. I just wanted to get it out of the way up there, big heavy lump. And of course, now I'm gonna make a start on the motherboard, which is an extremely exciting process. So of course, can't forget one of the most important parts, and that is installing the IO shield in the back of the case. Now, of course, we are fully MATX modified, so this should not present any problems. It should just snap straight into place, just like any other IO shield. And boom, it actually does, which is awesome. That's great. Now, there's a little bit of a, a rock to it, as you guys can see, but of course, the motherboard will hold that in. Um, that is just how the kit is. Now, I've got a little pink pot here that I'm actually gonna use for all of the motherboard screws. The reason I'm not gonna put them anywhere more permanent is because they're going straight back in. So I'm gonna get all of these out and keep them safe. We're gonna rest the motherboard in, screw it in, and then it's the home stretch. If that lines up and fits, we have really, really done our jobs pretty well, guys. And this is, this is crunch time. This is the moment that it all boils down to which is so exciting. That is it, all eight motherboard screws. We'll safely put them over there for now. Before we lay the board down, I actually need to lay some cabling down because I want to try to see if there's enough space to run the eight pin and two SATA cables round underneath the motherboard. So here are the cables that I'm gonna try and squeeze underneath the motherboard, which will definitely be interesting. Um, these SATA cables will definitely go underneath and they're the right angle ones, so they're actually gonna go like this under there for the drives. And then of course, one next to it here, like this. So both under the board, they should reach fine. And I may actually be able to feed them underneath when the board is there, but we'll put the board down with those sitting under there anyway. Um, and then of course the eight pin as well. So I'm actually gonna, gonna tape these down for now just to make my life as easy as possible. So guys, I'm actually just gonna give this a go. There's not a lot I can do in terms of preparation with tape because it's hard to know how it's actually gonna go down. So if I bring this over here, it'll be a case of just wangling the board on. So let's get that other SATA cable out of the way. It'll be a wangle job to get all of this lined up with everything going underneath here as it should. Yeah. 
So everyone, that is the motherboard screwed in. As you can probably tell, I did not manage to get the 8-pin connector underneath. And feeling it now, the clearance is not enough with the door latch in place. You could wangle it, but I don't think it would be very good for the cable and the door latch. I think it would make the door very, very stiff. Um, so that is the motherboard in place, and it lines up absolutely perfectly with the I.O. shield, which is wonderful news. However, we do have an interesting scenario, guys. Um, we've got two unused standoffs here, which are a good half to three quarters of an inch away from the motherboard itself. The, um, the paper guide actually told us to drill here, so we drill here. Um, just like it said and basically there is a screw hole here unused on the motherboard and there's no standoff underneath it and there is a Screw hole over here at the back that does not line up So for some strange reason guys my MATX board does not line up with the MATX template, which is very odd um, Now I am a bit nervous about that standoff at the back. It could short out the board um, because I know that it is lurking around there somewhere, but I may just try again with this one last screw. I don't know why that one's not going in there. Um, it's just falling straight down as if the standoff is not in the right place and it's not screwing into, into anything. Um, so hopefully it's fine, but maybe what I'll do is take the board out and put a bit of tape on top of that standoff, which is actually what I'm gonna do because it's better than um, shorting out my board. So that standoff is a good three quarters of an inch out from where it should be, um, which means it's not a drilling error by us by any means at all. Um, it is a mistake on the template, which is kind of unbelievable, really. Um, I know we didn't make that mistake. We did a very, very good job on this case, but not to worry, there's plenty of other standoffs to hold this board in. Um, now that I've taped that up, I don't have to worry about it shorting or anything like that, so that's good. Now it's time to screw the board back in. Now it's no massive deal that the cabling didn't go underneath, guys. That's no big deal at all. That was just like a sort of luxury for me to have, really. Um, so it's all good. I can take them around the edge. I'm quite happy to do that. Um, in fact, you know, it makes things a little bit easier in lots of ways if I ever want to change a cable or whatever. I don't have to take out the entire motherboard. I just hope that I've got enough um, actual cable length to do some nice looking runs. Um, the good thing about having those underneath the motherboard would have been it, it hid a few of the cables. But this isn't going to be a cable heavy build anyway. <laughs> So there we have it guys, exciting times. The board is indeed in place. Now, eyeballing it, I think the cabling is gonna be fine. It's just gonna be a little clogged up around this area, but I think we will come up with a nice, neat solution. I've got some really handy cable tidy things that I've bought, so yeah, I reckon we'll be fine with that. I reckon it's gonna look really, really good. So that's the board in place. Now, of course, because we have a radiator dangling off the board, it is pretty much essential to get that properly mounted. So let's see what we can do with the radiator. Whoa, that was tricky, but it's in. And check that out, guys. That fits like an absolute glove. And the best thing is as well, it closes. Now, it's quite high tension, that pipe, the, uh, the first pipe there. Or is it the second pipe? Let's have a look. Second, so hopefully, but of course, when it's shut, it's not under any tension, okay? It's just sort of free to do whatever it wants. It's literally just when it's uh, sitting open like that. Now, because of all these cables and stuff building up, I do actually have a fan guard for this one, so I will be putting that on. Um, but now, I reckon it is time to get the hard drive cage in and the two Western Digital Caviar Blacks. We'll get those in the bottom there before we get too many things in our way. Um, these are the two fan cables. There is actually fan connectors not very everywhere on this board, if that makes any sense. There's not loads, oh, but there's one there, and there's also one there. So we should be able to plug them both in without extensions, which is great. 
But for now, we will shut up the case and take a look at this. This is our Power Mac original drive caddy. As well as taking a look at these, these are our two brand new Western Digital Caviar Black one terabyte drives. And also, these, these are the rubberized screws that I'm gonna to attempt to use to mount these drives in the drive thing. So hopefully it all lines up and whatnot. Hopefully there's enough space to use them. So let's dig into our first drive. I wanted to use the original drive mount because I think it's quite effective and I also like it. But of course it's old by today's standards so it doesn't have any kind of anti-vibration stuff to it. So it's kind of, it's kind of important not to have vibration because that can make the system really loud. Just like a loud fan, you know, a loud hard drive can make the system quite loud. So the bottom drive mounts with the bottom screws. Now I'm not too sure how these rubberized screws work. Let's take a look at a pack and see what we've got going here. So we have got what looks to be two little rubber thingies, but that is actually not going to work for us because of how it is. Um, I reckon if we literally just screw them on like that with the rubber in between, how does that sound guys? And screw them on really tight and then that does provide a little bit of anti-vibration. Let's just give that a go. We've got nothing to lose. Now, these screws aren't flat, so I don't think they are gonna fit in the bottom of the case. No, they definitely will not. They are much too bulky. Let's just do it up and see, see how it looks. Um, the side ones will work, but I'm not too sure about these ones at all. But we will keep going. So guys, they are on, but for the money I paid for these screws, I'm not impressed. I'm probably using them the wrong way, but I've actually broke this one. Um, but they are not going to sit flush in the case anyway. Let's give it a go in the case and see if it sits. If it does, they'll be handy. But if not, we'll just use them on the sides and we'll use a sticky sticky pad underneath or something. No, it does not want to sit, guys, so I'm gonna have to use the actual screws from the Quicksilver on the bottom. That's not to worry, I can use the rubberized screws on the side, and I do still have four of those normal screws, so. Let's get these rubber ones off. There we have it guys, first drive attached with the original screws. And like I said, I'll just put a thin bit of rubber underneath there um, to try and eliminate some vibrations. It won't be perfect um, because there is still metal contact of course, but it'll be a lot better than nothing. So let's whip out the second one terabyte drive. And these are gonna be in RAID zero guys just like my SSDs, but these are gonna be used as my scratch disc. So a nice speedy scratch disc. Looking forward very, very much. There is that on there. And we will use these rubberized screws. So there we have it guys. Now I do have this really nice thin sort of rubbery mesh stuff. So let's cut some of this because I think this would be really good. Now I know that the majority of the case contact happens here with these two tabs, but it's still worth putting a little bit of mesh on there. Now, I wanna chop about that much off just because, just to give the clips enough breathing room. I mean, I know that's a rough cut guys, but this is, a bot this is the bottom so nobody sees it, which isn't you know the best attitude to have, but still it's inside the computer on the bottom. It's only me that's ever gonna see it and that's if I upgrade the drives which I can't see happening really because I'm gonna be offloading onto archive storage uh, anyway. So it's gonna be constant change of data. So there we have it. Nice bit of spongy mesh on the bottom. Now it, do, it is feeling a little bit tall, but we should be able to push it in. So let's see how far we get with this. The cabling is already building up in here as you can see guys. Yeah, there we have it. Drives in place, now they are gonna to have to be pushed down quite hard with this screw. So let me grab the screw, feed it through. Awesome guys, they look fantastic. Really glad that I'm using the original drive cage. Um, so, let's get this cabling out of the way, come on. I can't wait to get all this cabling tied back out of the way. Um, now what I'm gonna do is put on this little fan guard, just in case 
Now there's nothing directly in line with it at the moment, but still, you know, stuff moving about in the case and that. I don't want the fan to chop anything up. And that looks pretty cool. It makes it look quite original in there. Um, because the original G4 cover that I was actually going to use has got like sort of a grid design to it. But what I decided to do instead of having that big chunky bit of metal in here, it was just much easier to um, much easier to attach the fan directly to the outside wall. And boom, there we have it. One fan grill. Really nice. And of course, with all of that new stuff in place, of course the system still closes up just fine which is great to see. So guys, I got a little bit of cabling done. Here we have the two SATA cables for the hard drives. And as you can see, I can still tuck them underneath the board fairly well. And of course, I've got the two fans now connected, one over here, and that will be pushed down by the GPU and various stuff that's going in the PCI section, and one plugged in there. Front panel connectors in. Still need to do a bit of tidying up in that corner, but we are looking good. I am very, very pleased. Of course, we've still got a load of bulky cables to come, but this is a good start. So guys, I've actually been um, lining some more cables up, putting some more cables um, just sort of sitting there so I can get an idea for how the cabling is gonna work out. And it's actually gonna be, even though it's gonna be very full of cables, this build, um, it's actually gonna look pretty good. Now these black extensions have really helped me out. I think they're gonna really, really help me out. And using this original um, latch here for this 24 pin would be really great as long as I can fit the other end of it in here and route the 24 pin around the back of the radiator, but it'll have to be a along the top there. Um, but I, before I get too carried away with cables, I need to make sure that I have the majority of the hardware in place. So one thing that I want to do now is get the SSDs all Velcroed up. Now what I'm gonna do is I've got a piece of red tape on this one, and that basically means that um, it is the top port on the motherboard. Now, I believe the SATA ports do make a difference to the RAID, so it's important that I plug this one into the same SATA port again. Um, of course, it may not make a difference, but considering how hard this process was to get going, I don't want to uh, mess it up. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna temporarily stick it on the front for now so that I know which one is which. And of course, I need the back totally clear to apply the Velcro. Now, in terms of the Velcro, guys, I've never actually done this before, um, so it will definitely be interesting. I'm not sure, I believe this is the Velcro that sticks onto the case, and this is the Velcro that you put on the SSD. Um, I guess it doesn't really make a difference, but this is the one that feels sort of rougher. This is the smoother one, so I guess that kind of makes sense. Um, so all I'm going to do is cut an SSD sized length of Velcro and stick it on and then do the same for the other side. So sort of kind of roughly lining it up really doesn't have to be perfect, of course, because no one will ever see it. But I don't want to make a complete mangled job out of it either. Now, what I really could have done is um, drill some holes on the back wall to line up with the four drive holes. I could have really done that and that would have been smooth and I could have just screwed them on. But of course, what makes that difficult is you have to take, if you'd ever want to take the SSDs out, you'd have to take off the side panel, which is not the easiest thing to do with the um, push tabs on the inside. And also, um, I wasn't actually sure where I was going to mount the drives when I was case modding because I wasn't sure if I wanted to mount them on the door um, because originally I wanted to mount them on the door. But there we go. This Velcro is extremely sticky, of course. So let's stick that on there like so. So I think mounting SSDs with Velcro is sort of standard affair. I think a few people do it. So hopefully I'm not I'm not completely uh, messed up by thinking that it's uh, an acceptable method. But I've kind of got a good feeling about it. And there are certainly a lot worse ways that I could mount these, you know, in terms of cable ties and stuff, I guess. Would look pretty rough having cable ties wrapped around the front of the drive. At least, uh, at least this way they just look as if they're floating on the wall. And as long as the Velcro holds, no one will know, no one will ever know how they're attached. Um, so of course, that is that guys, looking good. Now the next phase is to get the other Velcro 
Ah, yeah, this is strong as hell. This is strong stuff. As long as the adhesive is as strong, then we are laughing. So, of course, the easiest way to do this is to not try and line it up or anything stupid like that with the back wall. It's literally um, stick some of this on the back of the drive, peel the back off, and then stick them on directly. Um, that is by far the easiest way to do it. So Now, the only thing that I've ever mounted in my life with Velcro before was a uh, wireless, a guitar wireless unit, a guitar wireless receiver in the bottom of a flight case. And I stuck it in with Velcro because I'd lost the rack mounts for it. And it actually stayed. Um, it stayed there throughout an entire tour, which is cool. So I've got good faith in Velcro and this is actually stronger Velcro by the feel of it. So everyone, moment of truth to see if this works. Let's peel that adhesive off and stick down an SSD. There's one sitting there. All right, guys, so as you can probably see, cabling is really coming on. Um, of course, it all needs tidying up, but we've got a little bit of an issue. It's not a major issue. The SATA stems that come with the PSU are all in series, so you've got cables coming out the front and back of the SATA connector. So obviously the SSDs are on the wall, that means they're bulging out a little bit. Um, and of course, it was impossible with the hard drive, so I've actually stolen this dual SATA power to Molex power thing from my uh, MDD. Uh, I need to buy enough one of those to replace that, but that is ideal for those drives. And as you can see, 24 pin and everything is all wired up, 24 pin and 8 pin, and tucked under there nicely. All the cabling needs um, tidying up one hell of a lot, but hopefully it won't be too difficult. I have managed to cable tie this extension here, so that's not going anywhere. That's nice and solid. Um, I like that a lot, it looks smooth. I'm just really glad I didn't mount the SSDs on the door now, there definitely needs to be enough space for all these cables here. Um, but even though all this junk is in here now, it still closes properly, which is great. So everyone, something that I'm ready to do now is this um, LED thing on the bottom of the case that I've been wanting to do. Um, now the only thing is, I did not end up um, doing a case mod in order to pass the cable through because I really wasn't sure what was happening with restrictions for space inside and everything and let's face it um, the level of importance with something like case LEDs isn't really that much um, so if I shift this back a little bit now the whole thing is, guys, I'm going to have to try. Let me get you a new angle so you can see. So as I was saying, the whole thing is I'm going to have to try and get the um, cable passed through this spare little hard drive thing here. As you can see, the, there are hard drives underneath this one, uh, or on top of this one, rather. And this one is blocked by the fan and radiator, so this is all I have. This little hard drive caddy slot here. Now, as you guys know, the plan is to stick the Bit Phoenix Alchemy LED strips on the bottom of the case somehow, somewhere, um, but they are powered by Molex. Let's ping some of these out. They are indeed powered by Molex, but, oh, look at that for a stroke of luck, guys. Look at that. Ah, isn't this just ideal? It comes with this little connector that I'm sure will fit through there. Yes, it will. It'll fit right through the machine, which is great news. Absolutely great. Now, as you guys can see, this is actually quite a long strip. I'm not sure if you can safely cut these. I believe you can. Um, but it's worth doing a little bit of research online first. So this, this will actually go pretty well. So there's one there, and I do have another pack. Let's open pack number two because I think we'll use both packs and cut them if we can, which will be easier. So there's those as well, great. So I've got everything I need, the two adapters, we'll save the two adapters for when we open up the case and wire them in. But if I can chop these down so that I can get one sitting along there and one sitting along there, that will be incredibly ideal. Well guys, a little interesting development is I've just realized that I actually have 
the Bit Phoenix Alchemy Aqua LED strips. These are the waterproof ones, which is intriguing. Here we have a strip that I have not modified. As you can see, it's got this waterproof casing around it. And here we have one that I have modified. And when I say modified, I basically mean I've ripped off the LED waterproof housing. Now I did initially have these to go in a Corsair 650D, so these are the long uh, 50 centimeter ones I believe. So I could have done with the shorter ones for this build, but it's not to worry. I've left this hanging off here for now, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to rip the waterproof thing off of this one, and have this going the opposite way, and then my plan is to do two curly whirlies at the end of LED strips if I can get them held there. At the moment I've managed to cram one in between these two screws so it doesn't go anywhere and I've got one small little bit of tape there and one small little bit of tape there. It doesn't actually look half bad and of course it's on the bottom of the case so you won't be seeing it anyway. Um, but yeah, the reason why I'm not just leaving the waterproof thing on is because it actually makes the LED strip a fair bit thicker. So I have a feeling that if the case is on a desk or something sitting next to you, you will be able to see that LED strip and um, that isn't good. I don't want that at all, you know, it's nice to see the effect of the lighting, but it's not nice to see the lighting itself. So literally all I did to strip it out was take some scissors, really carefully just cut through the outer casing, rip a little bit off like this. And it's a bit of a shame to do this, guys, because these are actually very expensive lights. And, um, you know, if you, if you want them in a, in a waterproof scenario, like an oil-cooled PC or something like that, then they're absolutely great. But um, for me at the moment, I don't want these aqua ones. So I can just literally pull the scissors all the way through them like this. That makes one long strip. And then I can unpeel the strip from the housing. Now, I'm not going to lie, guys. Um, that actually went a lot better than the last one I tried. So I'm pleased with that. But there you go. There's the waterproof housing come off of that. And of course, that will never, ever be waterproof ever again which like I said is a shame, but there we go. So now all I'm gonna do is attach that one there and see what I can do in terms of um, getting the cables flat and sorting out the trailing ends because I do not believe you can cut these guys. They are a continuous circuit. They do not have the little scissor marks on them and they're not meant to be modified anyway. You're meant to buy the length that you need. But like I said, I had these left over from the old 650D project that I was gonna do. Well guys, that looks like crap underneath. And if it looks like crap when I turn it over, then I will buy some proper shorter ones. Um, but by the looks of the bulging, you may be able to see it from underneath. If I have a look, it's actually not too bad. It's not too bad. There are a couple of bulky bits. I'll see how it looks. I may end up buying the proper ones and doing it properly. But that is that, it is now time to finish up all of the cabling. Can't believe I almost forgot this, guys. Um, blinking heck, that was a close one. I was just about to finish up all the cabling and get them all neat and everything, and then I thought, hang on a second, we're missing something. And of course, it's the video card. So this is the unboxing of the Gigabyte GeForce GTX 960. The little mini ITX one. Here she comes. Okay, here it is. Gigabyte on the box, looks very nice. Let's open her up. Okay, so it is quite a small card. There it is, small but weighty and chunky, which is always nice. We won't need anything else that's actually in here, but we'll have a look to see what's in here anyway. All we have got is a Molex, dual Molex to six pin, and some documentation and a CD. So we don't need any of that. Let's put that down there. And of course, let's dig into our GPU and see what it looks like. So, bit of tape. Okay, so whipping out the card for the first time. Here it is, and man, that is a nice little card. This isn't gonna give us any problems in terms of fitting in the case at all. So here it is, Gigabyte GTX 960, looking absolutely wonderful. Very, very pleased with that. And of course, single six pin, so minimal power cables required, which is great for keeping the cable mess down in the case. What have we got on the back? We've got a HDMI display port and two DVI connections. 
really nice, really, really nice. So I think it's around about time to slot this guy into the build. So the rear panel that um, was included with the laser hive kit actually included the screws for the PCI section, which is really handy because at least I know they're going to fit. Um, let's take that one out and that one out for now. That first one's a little hard to take out because that brass screw is um, protruding quite a long way into it. But anyway, let's grab the GPU and let's rip off the plastic cover that's covering the PCI slot and let's slot her in, which is an exciting process. Now, of course, the water pipes are a bit of a squeeze now, but that's okay. That is not too bad, and it does indeed line up to some degree, which is all well and good. So, let's put the screws back in. Very lucky that I haven't got a longer card, guys, otherwise those water pipes would be going nowhere near. Nowhere near at all. So one screw in. Let's get the one that's going to be slightly tricky to put in. Let's get that going. So there it is, our graphics card not going anywhere. And of course I have the power cable sitting here waiting for it ready. So we'll plug that in. Of course cable management will need to become a thing really soon, but let's see. Everything shuts and fits, fantastic. I pretty much do that after putting in every new component. I shut the case to see if it fits, and that is fitting wonderfully, which is great. So, I don't see any problem with installing the remainder of the PCI stuff. Um, there's one FireWire card and there's one USB 3.0 bracket. So hopefully that is all well and good. Little bit of strain on the water stuff, which is okay. I think that is not too bad. There's still a bit of play in the pipes and of course once it's shut, it's actually absolutely fine. So just gotta be careful opening and closing it. So next up is this little Firewire 400 card. This will be needed for my eyesight. This is gonna go right next to the GPU just because I don't want any clearance issues with the hard drives. But it doesn't block too much of it anyway. And of course I can't put it in the bottom slot because that's a PCIe slot. So this is my only option right here, regular PCI with this card installed. Of course, if I get a PCIe card, then the graphics card will have much more breathing room, so that's something that I will consider. But if this FireWire card works great, then there'll be no point complicating matters just to, uh, just to get a little bit of a quieter video card. But it all depends, of course, on how the video card performs. So that is the FireWire card in place. And now we are going to unwrap this guy. This is our um, USB 3.0 backplate. And I'm basically going to see, because this cable looks beast. I'm basically going to see if there's enough space for this absolutely colossal cable. I'm really disappointed that this cable is so colossal, guys. Here it is. And my gosh. This cable is massive. Look at this huge cable that I've got to find space for. Bloody hell. And the USB 3.0 header itself isn't exactly small. Um, but it just slots, it's literally right next to the card. I wish I could shorten this cable in some way. You literally plug it in right down there, I think. Unless I'm plugging it in the wrong place entirely, but let's just have a little check. I think this is USB 3. After further inspection everyone, front USB 3 is actually over here. This one is actually front USB 2.0 slot 3 if that makes sense. So that's a little bit less of a disaster because I could bundle up the cables over here. But it is still quite, I mean, you know, this is colossal. We're talking a lot of cabling here. Um, but anyway, let's mount the bracket, stop complaining and see if we can get it all sorted because it would be nice to have these extra two USB ports on the back because of course this case doesn't have any front USB you might as well utilize all of the USB 3 slots that I have I've got four USB 3s and two USB 2s on the motherboard so that's six USB and um, if I have these I'll have eight on board USB which will of course eliminate the requirement for a hub um, which is an extremely attractive idea because that means one less power socket, less cable mess, 
less hassle, less things to go wrong. And of course, while doing a new computer build, if, if I wasn't using a G4 case with any limitations, I would be doing my perfect build. This is my perfect build in a G4 case, but of course there are certain limits, um, limitations that come with this case. Um, but, blinking heck, this is, this is something special, this is. Wow, okay. Um, it's gonna have to go somewhere. And it's probably just gonna sit there, is it? I have no idea. So, let's see if the case shuts with all of this in it. It actually does. Shocking. Right then guys, I am gonna have a mega cable tidy session. All right everyone, bit of an update. As you can see, I've got the front panel cover off and unfortunately, um, I must have been a little heavy handed while wiring up the rest of the system. Um, there seems to be some damage to my power connector and stuff because I've just tried it and my power switch doesn't work. So what I'm gonna do is actually resolder an entirely new board. So I'm gonna order a new Quicksilver front panel board off of eBay and I'm gonna resolder the whole thing and uh, take some proper dedicated time to do it. I messed up this board quite badly. Um, I butchered it, as you probably saw in the previous part, in part number three. You know, it was working fine. I did have a bit of LED issue, but everything was working fine. But I do think I need to do a new board and do a proper job on it. And also, I'm going to put some cable grips on the side of the board to stop, you know, when the door opens and shuts, to stop it from pulling at the cables. So for now, I'm actually going to use this temporary power switch poking out the front of the case. Um, I'm going to put the, the silver thing back on the inside just because it looks good and that, but... Yeah, that'll be a bonus part of part five will be a new front panel connector um, because that will indeed be needed. Or not connector, sorry, the entire board. So I'll find a Quicksilver board on eBay and uh, yeah. So before benchmarking and everything in number five, I may do a bonus little part next with just some other little bits. I'll have to think about how I'm gonna slot this into the video series, but I'll figure it out. So that is that, everyone. Every single component that I wanted to put in my G4 is indeed in my G4. Here it is, absolutely crammed full of hardware, as you guys can see, and it is looking absolutely wonderful. It's not perfect, it's not totally done done, but it is looking extremely good in my opinion. I'm gonna leave that on there until that's all sorted, and of course, I won't fiddle with all of this until I have the new front panel um, circuit board in there, and that will be revealed in the next part, um, but, as far as the main bulk of the system together goes, it is indeed, it, well, here it is in all of its glory. This thing is looking full, but it still shuts really easily and properly. Just like any G4, obviously it's hard to do with one hand, but I am so, so pleased with this. And I'm just, oh man, I, I, I haven't even tested it yet, of course and I'm still so over the moon. Here we go guys, raw footage of the first boot of this system all in the case. Gutted I haven't got a working front panel, but still, that won't be long. Here we go, three, two, one, go. There it is. Taking a look on screen to see if anything pops up. Come on. Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Anything? Hmm, let me check my settings in terms of monitor and KVM for a second. So guys, we are now booting, of course. I have taken out this card um, because I don't have the NVIDIA drivers installed yet. So hopefully it boots up. Hopefully I haven't spun it out and I can download the NVIDIA drivers and we should be laughing then, I think, anyway. So everyone, the OCZ drive actually really comes in handy because it's really easy to boot into with boot flags. You can't really boot into the RAID 0 um, with any boot flags because you can't really select it. Um, so I'm actually booting up into the OCZ drive now, or attempting to anyway, with some boot flags with the um, NVIDIA card installed. Then the plan is, um, it does this really weird thing where it starts booting from the OCZ and then it jumps into the RAID 0, as you guys saw in part 2. Um, so then I should be able to install the NVIDIA drivers and I should be up and running. 
um, at least to some degree anyway. So that is the plan. So guys, I'm in with some luck. Um, something awesome is that with the latest NVIDIA web drivers um, for Yosemite 10.10.3, um, Chimera and Chameleon are actually supported by the driver itself, so there's no need for flags or anything. In theory, I should be able to just install this driver, shut down the computer, put in my graphics card, start up, and away to go. I'm so excited to see if this works. I really, really hope it does. So I've left you all on a little bit of a cliffhanger there. We were getting into the realms of software, and as you guys know, Part 4 is all about the build, so taking a look at some glam of the G4, you guys can see that it is indeed built, which is a very, very good sign. Everything that I wanted to put in this case, I managed to fit it in, and I fitted it in with ease. It wasn't the easiest build I've ever done, but it was certainly not as hard as I thought it was going to be. Now, some awesome pieces of luck that I did not plan definitely include the liquid cooler. I had no idea that that was going to fit and it only just fit so I'm so pleased it did. And the second massive bit of luck is the fact that the water pipes can actually go past not only the very tall Corsair Vengeance RAM but the GPU. If the GPU is just one inch longer then I wouldn't be able to fit it all in there. So it's all a stroke of luck and as you guys can see I was just starting to work on some GPU difficulties but no matter what difficulty Difficulties that the graphics card presents in terms of OS 10 and the install and all that stuff It is definitely worth it considering it is the perfect size and I reckon it's going to be the perfect power for my needs So this was part four all about the build and that does mean that there is only one more part in this series remaining now I would like to say that part 5 is going to be a little bit delayed because I'm waiting for the front panel for the Quicksilver case. Once the front panel arrives, I'm going to re-solder it, I'll include a little bit of footage of that in part 5, and there are a couple of other things that I really need to do before benchmarking this system. Because I won't have a chance to use this system as my main system before creating part 5, part 5 will still be made on my Mac Pro. There will be a follow-up or several follow-ups to this series in the future, in the next coming weeks and months and years probably. Probably, detailing how the Hackintosh is performing. So that was the build. I am so very, very pleased with how it's turned out. I hope you guys like the look of it and of course I will see you in part 5. <laughs>